All right, today we're going to look at function notation, a quick review of function notation from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Remember that function way is a convenient way, function notation is a convenient way to denote the dependence of one variable on another. Y equals f of x means that y depends upon x, y is a function of x, both are saying the same thing. So y as a function of x means that y depends on x. We're used to seeing this in two different forms. That's a function, y equals 2x plus 1. There's the same function, f of x equals 2x plus 1. Now, if I replace x with a 5 in this first equation, y is equal to 2 times 5 plus 1 is equal to 11. So y equals 11 when x is equal to 5. An easier way to say that is f of 5 is equal to 11. That seems more concise. So if we think of it the other way, f of 5 is equal to 11 is f of 5 equals 2 times 5 plus 1 equals 11. So f of 5 equals 11 is a concise way to say that y equals 11 when x equals 2. Since there are many ways to name a function, the most common ways, f of x, g of x, and h of x, you can refer to different functions in one problem without getting confused about which one you're talking about. All right, so let's review finding some function values or evaluating expressions with function notation in them. If I want to evaluate g of 7, I need to take my function g, and I'm just going to write g of x over top here. g of x is x plus 3 squared. So g of 7 equals 7 plus 3 squared. So that's 10 squared equals 100, or g of 7 equals 100. g of negative 9 is, um, that would be negative 9 plus 3 squared, which would be negative 6 squared equals 36. So g of negative 9 is equal to 36. h of 1. All right, so now I've got a different function. I'll write the function up above here. h of x is equal to the square root of x minus 5. So h of 1 equals the square root of 1 minus 5. And that equals the square root of negative 4. And that's an imaginary number, 2i. So h of 1 is equal to 2i. All right, and when we have function notation nested inside of another function notation, we need to perform the inner operation first. So I need to figure out what g of 0 is. So h of g of 0 is h of, and g of 0 would be 0 plus 3 squared. So that's going to be h of 9. h of 9 is the square root of 9 minus 5. Be aware that I have to look at each one of the individual functions to make sure that I'm applying the correct one. And then that's the square root of 4, which is 2. So h of g of 0 is 2. f of h of 21 is f of, and on the inside, h of 21 is the square root of 21 minus 5. 21 minus 5 is 16. The square root is 4, so that would be f of 4. f of 4 equals 4 times 4 minus 3. 
and that's going to be 16 minus 3, which is equal to 13. So f of h of 21. equals 13. All right, next one just doesn't have any numbers in it. It's just g of f of x. So it's g of, now work the inside first, f of x is 4x minus 3. Now what I need to do is to replace the x's in the function g with 4x minus 3. So that would be 4x minus 3 plus 3 squared. Because to use function g, we have to take the inputs, add 3, and then square that. So simplifying, 4x minus 3 plus 3 is 4x. 4x times itself is 16x squared. So g of f of x is equal to 16x squared f of g of x is a different thing. That's f of, and what was g of x? g of x was x plus 3 squared. f takes the inputs and multiplies them by 4 and then subtracts 3. So f of g of x is equal to 4 times x plus 3 squared minus 3. Lastly, g of h of x minus 3 is g of, and we need to find out who h of x is. h of x is the square root of x minus 5. Then there's a minus 3 on the inside of the parentheses. Now we need to apply this entire thing to function g. Use it as the input. So that g of x is the function that takes its inputs and adds 3 to them and squares the result. So I'm going to take my input, add 3, and square the result. So what's the input? The input is square root of x minus 5 minus 3. Okay, so adding those together, the minus 3 and the plus 3 cancel, and we just get the square root of x minus 5 squared. When we square a square root, we undo it. So the result is x minus 5. So g of h of x minus 3 is equal to x minus 5. We're not taking into account domain, which we'll take into account later. Okay, so next example, for, all for the same three functions, we're going to find all values of x for which g of x is equal to 4. So if g of x is equal to 4, we can just take our function g of x and we can replace the g of x with 4. So if 4 is equal to x plus 3 squared, then x plus 3 would be both the positive or the negative square root of that number. So x plus 3 could be 2, or x plus 3 could be negative 2. Remember that when we solve a, an equation by taking a square root, there are two solutions, plus or minus. If x plus 3 is equal to 2, then x is equal to negative 1. Or if x plus 3 is equal to negative 2, then x is equal to negative 5. So there are two values of x for which g of x is equal to 4. In B, we want to find all values of x for which h of x is equal to 7. So I'm going to take my h of x equation. And I'm going to replace the h of x with 7. In order to solve this one, we need to square both sides. So x minus 5 is equal to 49, and x is equal to 54. 
can see p of x is equal to 2 times f of x minus 3 plus 1, and we are interested in finding p of 8. All right, so p of 8. Notice that I've taken that left side of the equation and I've replaced the x with 8. So what we're going to do on the right side of the equation is we're also going to replace the x with 8. Now what we want to do is do the inside most operations first. 8 minus 3 is 5. Next thing is to evaluate the function. What's f of 5? Well, let's remember what f of x is. f of x is 4x minus 3, so f of 5 is 4 times 5 minus 3, which is 17. And then we need to follow order of operations from there and do the arithmetic. So p of 8 is equal to 35. All right, if k of x is equal to 5 times g of 1 half of x minus 2, we need to find k of 2. So I'm going to replace my x with 2 to find k of 2. If I replace x with 2 on the left side of the equation, I need to replace it on the right side of the equation as well. So now what we need to do is to do the inside most parentheses first. Minus 2. Next is the function evaluation. So we need to find g of 1. Remember who g of x is? g of x is x plus 3 squared. So g of 1 would be 1 plus 3 squared, which would be 4 squared or 16. So this is equal to 5 times 16 minus 2. 80 minus 2 is 78. So k of 2 is equal to 78. On the next page, you need to recognize how to find function values from a graph. So this graph is equal to is y equals f of x. I'm going to keep this in mind as we look for the value of f of 2. I'll write there our equation, f of x is equal to y. So if we look at f of 2, it's clear that x has been replaced with 2. So what are we looking for on the other side of the equal sign? We're looking for the replacement for y. Looking at the graph, when x is equal to 2, the y value is equal to 0. So that means that f of 2 is equal to 0. Same thing is true about p. We are looking for the replacement for y when x is equal to negative 2. Here's the point where x is equal to negative 2. It's clear that the y value there is negative 1, so f of negative 2 is negative 1. When we look for a replacement for y in part c, there is no point on the graph where x is equal to negative 4 because that's to the left of the entire graph. What that means is the y value is not defined. So what we can say about f of negative 4 is that it is undefined. In D, we're going to add together two function values, f of negative 1 is the y value when x is equal to negative 1. That's negative 2. And then we're going to add to that the y value at 3. The y value at 3 is negative 3. So adding those two together, we get negative 5. In E, we have another expression to evaluate. So on the left side of the equation, I'll replace the x with 3. And on the right side, I'll also replace the x with 3.
props. Now we just need to evaluate the right side in order. Do the inside most operation first. 3 minus 2 is 1. Next is function evaluation. f of 1 is 2. Why is f of 1 2? Because on the graph, there's a point where x is 1 and y is 2. So this is equal to 5 times 2 plus 3. So g of 3 is 13. In f, this time we're looking for x if g of x is negative 7. So I'll replace the g of x with negative 7. Now you remember all the operations that we did in the previous example. We're going to do them in reverse order. The last thing that we did was add 3. So now we're going to undo that by subtracting 3 from both sides. That's negative 10 equals 5 times f of x minus 2. The next thing we need to undo is the times 5. So multiply, divide by 5 and we get negative 2 equals f of x minus 2. So now we need to undo the f. So we are looking for the input that gives f an output or a y value of negative 2. Well, there's actually a couple of those values. So let me erase what we've got on the graph because there's a lot of stuff going on there. And let's look at the graph and see where the y values on the graph are negative 2. There's a couple of places. That's when the input is negative 1 or the input is 2.5. So our input is negative 1 or the input is 2.5. This is a little more challenging. We add 2 to both sides, and we get x is 1 or x is 4.5 as our solutions. In the next example, we have a graph that shows the monthly cost C of T in dollars of cooling an apartment, and it depends upon time, T, in months, and the graph is shown. So from the graph, we're going to find the value of C of 18. So that means that our input for C is equal to 18. Now remember that the function is C of T. So it looks like T must be replaced with 18. So I'm going to go down here and find 18 on the horizontal axis, which is the T values or the input values. And then I need to go up on the vertical axis and find the C of T value for that. So that point on the graph is the point 18, 60. What that means is that C of 18 must equal 60. The meaning of this is when T equals 18 months, the cost of cooling the apartment is $60, just putting it in words. In part B, we're asked for what values of T is C of T equal to 35. So I want to find the Y value or the output value of 35. And that looks like that happens at a few different times. So it looks like that happens at T equals 3 t equals 9, t equals 15, and t equals 21. What does that mean? That means that at these times, the cost of cooling the apartment is $35. The last thing that we're going to do is to graph a function using table of values. So for this first function, f of x equals x minus 2 squared minus 3. You might remember how to graph this with transformations, 
but we're going to do it with table of values for the time being. The reason that we're going to do it with table of values is that there's a starting and a stopping point. We need to start at negative one and we need to end at four. So I'm going to number my X's from negative one to four. Next, I'm going to find the F of X values. If I plug in negative one, we get negative three squared minus three, which is going to give us six. If we plug in zero, we get negative two squared minus three, which is going to give us one. If we plug in one, we get negative one squared minus three, which is going to give us negative two. If we plug in two, we get zero squared minus three, which will give us negative three. If we plug in three, we get one squared minus three, which gives us negative two. And if we plug in four, we get two squared minus three, which is going to give us um, one. So now let's plot these, but let's realize that one of these values should not be included. Notice that the inequality does not include 4 as an endpoint. So this point will actually be denoted with an open circle. That is to say that point will not be included. So we have negative 1, 6, 0, 1, 1, negative 2, 2, I'm oh, sorry, 1 comma negative 2. Let me graph that one correctly. And then uh, we need to graph the point 2 comma negative 3, 3 comma negative 2, and 4 comma 1 will be an open circle. Then we're going to connect between the endpoints. Notice that there's a closed circle at the end of the graph where x is equal to negative 1 and an open circle where x is equal to 4. For the next function, we'll do something similar. We'll create a table of values for x and g of x values. And the x values are going to go from negative 3 all the way to 5. Plugging in, we plug in negative 3. The g of x value is uh, negative 1 half times 2. Because we have to add 1 and then take the absolute value, that's going to give us positive 2 plus 3. That's going to give us a y value of 2. Plugging in negative 2, we get 1 half of 1 plus 3. That's going to give us two and a half. Plugging in negative one, we get one half of zero plus three. That's going to give us three. Plugging in zero, we get one half of one plus three. That's going to give us two and a half. And plugging in one, negative one half of two plus three is. 2. And if we do all the rest of the arithmetic, there is a pattern. This is going to start going up by, or uh, going down, excuse me, by 0.5. So the next y value will be 1.5, the next 1, the next 0 0.5, and the next 0. And you can double check that with arithmetic. What we need to notice about our interval is that there is a not included value, and that's x equals negative 3. So this point is going to be denoted with an open circle. So let's plot all of our points. Negative 3, comma 2. Oops, that's going to be an open circle. And then negative 2, 2 and a half. Two and a half. Negative one, three. Zero, two and a half. 
and then we go down by halves after that until we get to the point five comma zero connecting the graph that looks like that and that's and that's 